Hi, I'm the Warrior Witch, and you can call me Nike. It's been a while. I've moved. Uh, you may hear some echo in the room, because the room doesn't have that much. So that's where we are. This video, quite similarly to another video that I recorded and posted recently-ish, uh, will deal with some very heavy topics surrounding racism, white supremacy, and Nazism, and the alt-right pipeline, because this entire video is going to be about what to do or what to look for when you feel a friend is falling down the alt-right pipeline. So if this is going to be something that is particularly sensitive to you, I would recommend maybe coming back to it later or making sure that you're in a good headspace to be able to engage with this kind of content and just know that you're loved and supported and it's not easy to engage with. So don't feel bad if you don't feel you can watch it right now. I have spoken before often about how in witchcraft spaces, we usually feel safer from alt-right rhetoric because so many of us associate it with the left and leftist ideas, especially online. But the reality is often more complicated than that. Heathens especially have to be very aware of this unfortunate, insidious side of the occult, witchcraft, and paganism at large. As a heathen, I think it's important and even required as religious doctrine to speak out against evils like this and the ways that it can grab people. There's a few ways that we see friends slip into the alt-right pipeline, each with their own signs to watch for, and they're also going to vary depending on the spaces that you're in. For example, in New Age spaces, you're going to see a lot of this with conspirituality and some of these hidden ideas that people don't always realize have these hateful histories behind them. And for a lot of people, the New Age is their introduction into witchcraft and paganism and the occult. and it has its own issues. I could make an entire video about the New Age and its pipeline specifically into the alt-right, but the sort of sum up of that information is that it involves anti-Semitic and racist thought leaders like Alice Bailey getting really popular earlier on and their ideas continuing to have those influence even still today. Look no further than spirit science and his ideas and promotion of what boils down to space Jews, hollow moon, and fluoride conspirituality. Another area that I see this alt-right pipeline very plainly is obviously in heathenry and ceremonial spheres. This is a problem that we see all throughout paganism, but unfortunately we see far more sightings of these particular ideologies in these specific spaces. I want to say at top that I am a heathen, and I would never be part of a religion or movement or practice that was based in so much evil. However, it would be irresponsible of me not to recognize that there are broad sections of heathenry and of the occult in general that are fully rooted in racism and white supremacy. I addressed some of those in a video that I did recently about Aaron Lale's book, which you can find here, but I want to get into some of the science to watch for. Most of the time, people aren't going to just jump headfirst into the alt-right. It's a slow, gentle slide and a transition of ideas and values as a given person interacts more with members of that community. Many of the talking points that you'll hear can often also be given a perfectly rational explanation if you don't really know what you're looking for. And some of these explanations don't necessarily mean that somebody is falling to the alt-right pipeline, depending on some of the stuff that they're saying. And an important one that I want to address up top deals with ethno-religions and ethno-religious communities. Ethno-religions themselves are not bad in any way, shape, or form. Trying to connect with your own traditions and your own heritage is a beautiful, wonderful thing. And we get to see that worldwide. There are a bunch of examples, but the ones that most people are going to be most familiar with are hoodoo, voodoo, and ATRs, Judaism to a certain extent, and indigenous spiritualities practiced by Native Americans, Native South Americans, First Nations people, Inuit, Métis, Maori, Sami, just to name a few. There are many traditions globally that are only passed on through certain cultural and familial lineages. We often hear these referred to as closed traditions. And again, closed traditions are not bad. However, we see these issues pop up within the alt-right pipeline when we witness attempts to close off a religion that was never closed in the first place and drawing arbitrary lines that don't follow any guidelines aside from whiteness. For the heathen side of things, we see a lot of red flags in the form of talks about heritage, preserving culture, and ancestry. 
Many of these flags and dog whistles are not exclusive to heathenry and apply to a much larger issue of spotting red flags all across the occult and pagan sphere, and we can see it in places like Celtic spirituality and general occultism and, and things like that, especially if they have a lot of these Western European roots. But you can look no further than the AFA and the O9A for specific examples of how these things come about. The AFA holds the blatant view that heathenry is only for those who are of Nordic descent and white. This, of course, is bullshit. As heathenry is an open, reconstructed religion, it has never been, can never be, and will never be closed and exclusive to white people. The attempt to make heathenry and other practices of European origin as a whole into a whites-only space is an obvious alt-right flag. The problem is that they can pull people over by attempting to parallel it with these legitimate ethno-religions, despite the clear lack of similarities when it comes to those other ethno-religious groups being the victims of centuries, if not millennia, of horrific discrimination, oppression, and even genocide. The attempts to close heathenry and other similar practices to whites only is a clearer flag than others, but often comes coupled with the more subtle and covert alt-right flags. Those attempting to draw people into the alt-right and those who have started to slide down that path often use terms or phrases that could be seen as harmless or can be written off as jokes, sarcasm, satire. Tradition and ancestry are not bad things. A lot of very positive and wonderful communities focus on both of these. However, when it starts to turn into a yellow flag is when the talk shifts of a rejection of modernity specifically. And again, while these things are not necessarily a red flag on their own or an all right dog whistle, it can point to a need to look closer for other signs. Appeals to authority and tradition coupled with a rejection of modernity specifically is when you start to see some of these flags turn from yellow to red. The issue with spotting this one, however, is that it's often explained away by those falling into or fully entrenched in the alt-right as jokes or satire or sarcasm when the reality is that there is a hidden truth behind their words in these so-called jokes. We need to keep an eye out to see if this goes from talk of heritage and tradition to rejecting people from the tradition based on being mixed or not white enough the way that the AFA does. I think some of the other talks that we really need to be watching for are unfortunately extremely hard to watch for and can be much more difficult to spot in the first place. What I mean by this is specifically in our attempts to help educate our friends who may have been raised centrist or even conservative. They enter the community and maybe they have a few opinions that are a little ignorant or they are a little bit ill-informed. One of the ways that people get pushed from the center to the alt-right is through a heavy rejection. People feeling attacked for their ignorant views and feeling like they can't talk for fear of being canceled, which is often another flag that we'll see is this talk of cancel culture and woke culture. They start to feel like the only people who don't hate them for their views are those who are on the right. And the right knows, and specifically the alt-right knows, that this is their time to swoop in and show kindness and sympathy in order to bring this person over to their side. Now, this is not to say that we shouldn't be attacking these views. We certainly should. But it becomes a hard line on how to handle those things. And that's where we need to be aware of when we're watching somebody go through this specifically. Not necessarily in how we should be responding, but watching how someone else is responding to a response to their views. This is also a difficult sign to wrestle with, particularly because centrism is not necessarily bad in all cases. It can be explained by a legitimate desire to see the full scope of an issue or to hear both sides of an issue. However, when this centrism leads to people being silent on important issues of bigotry, like racism, homophobia, transphobia, classism, sexism, and other similar forms of bigotry in the name of not wanting to get political or trying to see all sides, that is where I would warn you to take a much, much closer look at the person saying these things. The reason I think this one is the hardest to spot and deal with is because it's hard to respond to these views in a way that is consistent with what we feel is right and in a way that is effective. I've always felt that we need to combat these ignorant, bigoted, hateful ideas head on. However, it's a precarious line between an attempt to educate and simply yelling at someone. When it's a stranger, we often err on the side of aggression because it's easier to cut them out. It's easier to see those signs and to see 
where this leads and to have a more broad scope of their views in a way that is less biased. It's much more difficult with our friends because we often err on the side of possibly too much forgiveness and grace. We don't like to yell at our friends, or at least I don't. And I don't keep people around if I think that they're an irredeemable bigot. I've found, though, that on the whole, it's much harder to tell a friend that you're concerned about their statements or the direction they seem to be headed in. We end up at this awkward crossroads of remembering all the good times and giving them perhaps more credit or more justifications for their actions than they may or may not deserve. In a way, the company that we keep is often a direct reflection of our values, or at least the values we think that we may be able to pass on to them. It's a wonderful thing to attempt to educate someone when you feel there is some hope into getting them to understand your side. Despite our best efforts to educate, there will often come a time that we need to be willing to take a step back and look at the totality of the actions of our friends and loved ones and make the hard decision that we can no longer deny their troubling words, actions, and perhaps even associations. How do we know when it's too late or when there is still time left for them to save them? How do we know when it will even help to intervene? How do we know if we can? These are hard questions and sometimes there isn't even a good answer to be found. It's hard because sometimes people can be saved from this slow backslide into the alt-right. Sometimes we are able to snap them out of it and point out the undeniable to make them reconsider some of the things they've done and said and people they've associated with and the directions they've gone. And sometimes we aren't. There is no cut and dry blanket answer that I can give you or that anyone can give you. I honestly don't even know myself where the line is drawn sometimes. If you think there's still time to save someone from this backslide, that they can see what actually sits at the end of the road that they've been walking down, it's important to try as long as we're not putting ourselves into direct danger, because that is often where this leads. If we can help to educate and guide, I truly believe we should do it, but we also need to keep ourselves safe in order to continue fighting another day. We need to be ready to make that hard decision to realize this loved one of ours is beyond saving, at least for this very moment. We need to be ready to say, I've done all I can and it's not working. The last few years have shown many of us, many times, between the election, the pandemic, and more. We've had to make the horrifying realization that someone we love is too far gone politically and that we need to take a step back for our own health and safety. The alt-right doesn't get people by screaming their most hateful views as loud as they can. They wait until they have a through line with you via your beliefs and slowly work their quietest ones into that system without you noticing. They move incrementally, like that old saying about frogs in boiling water. That's what makes it so insidious. The alt-right is not stupid. They very well know that the best way and their most successful avenue for recruitment is through this slow slide. The best way we can combat it is by being aware of these dog whistles and hateful symbols that may otherwise fly under the radar the way that they're meant to by the people who make and use them. It hurts. It sucks. Sometimes it makes us feel like we failed. I hope you can hear me when I say you didn't fail. The alt-right pipeline is a powerful one. If it were easy to stop, we wouldn't still be having issues with it and run-ins with it still today, especially in the pagan and witchcraft sphere. We need to keep a careful eye out for these dog whistles, but we also need to keep a careful eye on ourselves to make sure we have the energy to keep fighting. We need to have the energy to make a community a safer, better place for everyone. The last note I want to leave you on is this. If you can see the signs, the red flags, the dog whistles, cut out the cancer while there's still time. Hand wringing and trying to wait and see only allows it to metastasize. I hope none of you ever have to look back and realize that that's exactly what has happened. Stay safe out there. Blessed be.